The radiator saw 150. Caps like about the same. Upper hose about 100 and 170. Lower hose 90. Well, that's not good. Oh, hi there, YouTube. Got the old 83 in the garage today. Uh, as you probably saw in the beginning of this video, I got a stuck thermostat, unfortunately. So, it's a pretty straightforward process, but I figured I'd make a video on it, because, well, it's pointless and kind of boring to do it without making videos now. So, let's go check it out and see how it goes. So, as I went to Detroit over the weekend for a car show at M1 Concourse, I happened to notice the car was running a little bit warm. Uh, it was not so bad getting down there, but on the way back, it was definitely pinging towards warm. I drove back roads home, kept the heat on, and it stayed within a reasonable level. Toyota says anything below the red line is normal operating conditions, which I'm not a big fan of, but clearly there was a massive temperature difference between the two coolant hoses. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the thermostat, probably change both coolant hoses. These are parts that I'm planning on using on a different car, but eh, whatever, I need to do this. So let's get this knocked out. So draining the coolant out of these things is actually super simple. If you look down there... Don't know how well I can get that to focus. I'll probably just snap a picture in there and uh, snip it into this video overlaying this. But there is a little uh, drain valve on this radiator right here. There's also one on the cylinder head over here. Right there. That little thing right in there. So something I forgot to do and that you'll see as this video goes on is uh, make sure you pull the radiator cap off first. That's going to allow the air to flow all the way through it. Otherwise, it's going to try to just be pulling it out of there. So... So we're going to go ahead and thread this thing out, just like normal. Back it up, left-handed. And there we go. This is going to take a little while, but this is the easiest and cleanest way to get the coolant to drain. So I'm not going to reuse this coolant. I'm just going to put new coolant in. And actually, there might be a little bit of a restriction in here because it's draining really slow. So while we're waiting for fluids to drain, let's talk thermostats. Now, I know what you guys are all going to do. You're going to hop on Rock Auto. You're going to use a discount code from the Tercel 4-Wheel Drive Forum, and you're going to see these radiator or these thermostats for, like, $3. And you're going to be like, what a great deal. That's awesome. Look at that. It's a thermostat. But let me show you side-by-side -side compared to the Toyota one, which is the OEM thermostat right here. I bought this off eBay for $24. They're about $35 on Amazon. I have yet to bother calling a Toyota dealership to see how much they run, but I'm sure it's a pretty penny. Either way, $20 for a thermostat cap, it's even $30 off Amazon, it's still not that expensive for most cars. And look at the quality difference side-by-side -side with these two. I mean, this thing just looks like a significantly better built than this cheap piece of crap right here. So I was running these in my uh, 85 Spud and I was having, I had a couple of them back to back get stuck closed or stuck open. Uh, after I started putting OEM Toyota thermostats in all my cars, I have had zero problems. So not that much money. I would highly recommend you just spend a few extra dollars and get an OEM thermostat. Alrighty, since I'm just replacing the hoses, I'm going to pull the top one off. You don't necessarily have to pull this off to get to the bottom hose to change the thermostat, but it's a little bit easier. I already have replacement hoses for this thing anyway, so might as well rip off these unknown aged hoses. They were probably changed when the radiator was changed in 2016, but you also never know. People are pretty typical to just ooh, reuse things. That's why the drain on the cylinder head is good. That's all over the floor now. I love cooling on my floor. Awesome. I don't know what happened here, but it looks like somebody didn't cut the backside for some weird reason. Don't really know. Either way, I'm glad we're replacing this. It's looking like this upper radiator hose might be a job for the Ugga Dugga. There is two clamps on it, which is always a good sign, I suppose. Looks like I probably actually can't get this in there. Yeah, I'm going to try to grab some screwdrivers. It looks like this hose needed to be replaced for a while, I'm guessing. That's the original style right here, and this one does not want to come out. We're going to use an extension and try this again. Ha ha ha! Out comes this old dilapidated, dilapidated, to whatever you want to call it hose so the thermostat is going to be trapped inside whoop, i zoomed a little hard that housing right there it's a 10 millimeter nut there's going to be two of them one on each side 
You're probably going to want a short extension, something like so, for the uh, backside, but you can get them with a wrench if you're careful. But we're just going to go ahead and use a uh, extension to make the job a little bit easier on ourselves, hypothetically anyway. Oh, look at that. Big surprise. Cheap aftermarket thermostat and it's stuck open. Who would have thought? So I don't know how I'll be able to film this or get this, but I'm going to try to clean this gasket off right here. I'm just going to use a razor blade and be very careful. This is an aluminum surface, so you don't want to hog it up too crazy, so be gentle to it. Okay, so we got the new OEM thermostat right here. You're going to notice this little... Uh, Foopy foopy right here. You want to make sure you got this thing facing up when it's sitting inside the car. So the thermostats cannot be put in backwards. So that's the one big bonus about these Tercels. This is the part number for the Gates gasket. These are super cheap on Rock Auto. They're like 50 cents each or something like that. So I ordered a whole bunch. That way when I was ordering them, I don't have to deal with essentially dropping it, ripping it, folding it, tearing it, you know, all the sort of fun things that we don't really want to have happen with gaskets. So this has a little sticky tab on it. You can go ahead and pull this off, and that will go ahead and uh, show some adhesion. That way you can go ahead and stick it on whatever you're going to stick it on. It'll stay in place. The surface going to the block is not 100% perfect, so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of RTV and run it on the block right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and bolt this in place. And then, remember, this stuff does have a cure time, so we can't just go ahead and immediately fill it full of coolant and hope for the best. I'm going to show you guys a little trick to make sure it's not leaking, too. So I'm going to go ahead and take a really thin layer and layer this on the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and shove the gasket on here and then bolt this in place. Hopefully oh, this shows up okay. I really can't get a good camera angle out at it without putting my fingers and hands in the way. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. Do a little light layer around the perimeter of this because this surface is not 100% smooth anymore. It's old, it's aluminum, it's a bit pitted. Plus there's potential remnants of old gasket on there. So a little bit is going to go a long way in my book. Okay guys, forgive me for the absolute terrible camera angle. This is like my sixth attempt at trying to get a good camera angle on this, and I don't think I can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and shove my hand right in your guys' way where you cannot see anything. Now that you didn't see any of that, I officially got it lined up finally. Sorry guys, I'm going to have to invest in a better set of tripods and a better camera someday so I'm not using my phone because I keep getting text messages and phone calls and it stops recording, so... We'll get there someday, though. I appreciate you guys sticking through. Okay, let's go ahead and snug these up. Remember, these are aluminum onto aluminum, so they don't need the strength of God. Just a little, little bit's all they need. Okay, now that we got this all done, we're going to go ahead and throw this lower radiator hose in. We're probably going to have to do a little bit of trimming off the ends because it's probably going to be a skosh too long. They usually seem to be, but we'll see how this goes. Okay. Lower radiator hose. There we go. We're on. Officially and hopefully for a long time. I'm going to go ahead and throw a hose clamp on there. Run that down to the bottom. Throw a hose clamp up top. Okay, so before I go ahead and throw some coolant in it, I'm going to test it for leaks. Make sure you got your drain valve closed under the radiator. That's all set. Now, this is just a Harbor Freight pressure tester kit. This is number 16 in those kits. The kits are not super expensive. Last I looked, but I bought this kit a long time ago. You can rent these at all auto parts stores. Uh, personally, I would recommend doing this. Otherwise, you could use cooked water. And then just go ahead and test it with that, and then you can drain the water out and then fill it back up with coolant. That way you don't waste multiple gallons of coolant. So we're going to go ahead and put some pressure to this. Uh, put about 12 PSI in there and see if we get a leak in this thing at all. So... Yeah, it looks like we're at about 12 PSI. It's looking like we're holding pretty good. We would have lost some air right now if this thing was leaking. So I think that's a good sign. I'm gonna go ahead and let it save for about a minute. If it drops any, we'll check further, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be good. 
in a minute and i don't know if you guys can read that but it's still right at 12 psi right where it was so happy camper i'm gonna go ahead and purge the air out of this let's go ahead and fill this thing up with coolant now so i'm gonna go ahead and dump some preston premix in this um i don't have one of those fancy coolant filler funnels but we're gonna go ahead and make do with what we got if you guys aren't gonna use any premix do please make sure you guys use distilled water I'm spilling a little bit on that one. That's why it sounds like it's pouring everywhere. I need a better funnel. Maybe I will invest one of those fancy coolant funnels sometime soon. I think that'd be a really worthwhile investment. You can pour this stuff in twice as fast. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. I'm gonna try to burp the system right now. Once the coolant gets flowing, it should kind of pull some of the air bubbles out. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the hood and run to the local corner wash and blast underneath the hood because there is coolant everywhere and I don't want this to stink for six months. So I'll be back in about 10 minutes and we'll pick up at the end. Okay, we're back home now. Things are still a little bit steamy because stuff's drying off, but we got 170, 160 right there and 120 right there, 130, which means that thermostat is officially opening because both coolant hoses are warm. So job well done. Success. Well, I hope a few of those tips in there were really helpful for you. I'm, I am going to do a radiator video sometime soon, showing you guys some different radiator options because the Tercel radiators themselves are getting pretty hard to find. So stay tuned for that sometime. For now, i got to clean up. i got to get ready to go to bed. i got to go to work tomorrow. Not that you guys care. But anyway, really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll get another tripod here soon and can do some better uh, angles of recording. I'm kind of fighting this really hard with my phone sometimes with certain things. But... Really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully some of this stuff is helpful. If you have any video requests, feel free to drop a comment or DM me on Instagram or whatever. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios.